Hey, this is Rick, and this is another HTML5 game dev tutorial using TypeScript. So uh, today, uh, we're going to be talking about playing audio. Um, and not just playing audio, but we're going to dynamically load uh, some audio uh, that has all of our audio for a single game in it, uh, one sound file. And we're also going to load a JSON file, which tells us where in that sound file are all the individual pieces of our game. So, um, you know, this sound file has uh, a series of um, markers in it. This is our JSON file. So first, what we're going to do is load up this JSON file, which is going to tell us where in our sound file are the various sounds we need for this game. And uh, this, this uh, audio file came from a, a Mahjong game I did a while back. It just has a couple sounds in it. It's got like a little ching sound and it's got uh it's got a couple swish sounds and a click uh you know for your mouse clicks so uh basically uh we're going to load this json file up and then we're going to load up uh a a sound file that goes along with it that has all of these sounds in it at the various uh points um we are also going to not be using the HTML canvas in this one. It's kind of not really necessary since we're just learning how to play sounds. Um, this could go with a canvas uh, app. It could go with, you know, a DOM app. It doesn't really matter. So uh, right now we're just going to use the DOM to create these buttons and we're going to play these various sounds uh, coming from our sound manager. So this, this is an object we're about to create in a little bit and it's going to play, you know, when you when you tell it to play these different sounds, it's going to have gotten that data from uh, the um, from the JSON file, and we'll know what to play based on that. So, because we're not using the canvas, we don't really we're not going to have a game loop. You know, we're not going to have all of the stuff that we had previously previously made to uh, load up uh, that canvas. So, um, oh, I don't want this in here. So we're uh, we're not going to be using all of that stuff that we had written from previous tutorials. Um, we're going to be writing basically stuff that you'll want to add to a game, uh, kind of as separate pieces. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, create a sound file class, and this is going to be what is going to load up um, the sound file. And we should only have one of them, but there's you could have multiple if you want to. We're also going to create a sound manager uh, and a sound marker class. So to start out with, we'll have this sound file class. And uh, in this, we're going to create an, here's our audio context. We're going to need to know if it's playing. I'm not actually sure that I use this right now. Let me, I don't think I use this for this tutorial. No, I don't use this for, I'm not going to use this for this tutorial. So let me get rid of it. Um, you know, whether load is complete, this XHR, this is how we're actually going to load our file. Uh, we're going to use an XML HTTP request to actually load up our sound file, which I've always thought was kind of counterintuitive that you're loading up a sound file or a JSON file or whatever you're loading. If it's not XML, you still use an XML HTTP request. Uh, we need an audio buffer and a source audio or a sor audio buffer source node. Uh, this is this audio buffer is where we are going to load our sound into. And this audio buffer source node, we're going to have to copy, basically we're going to have to, every time we want to play the sound, we're going to have to take our buffer and we're going to have to set values in the source from that buffer. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is create a context. This is in our constructor. Um, then we're going to, uh, this is how we will load a file when the sound manager tries to load the file. It's going to look to see if the context is undefined. If it is, then we'll return. Otherwise, we're going to create an XML HTTP request. We're going to get the file name, and then we're going to set the response uh, type to array buffer, which is, I believe, just means binary data. Uh, and then on load complete, we're going to call this guy down here, and then we send it. Uh, so once that file is loaded, you know, we set our XHR value to the current target that comes in, uh, and then we are um, we take the context and we decode the audio data from the response that just came in, uh, and then this is you know after we've decoded the data, then we're going to set 
our buffer to the buffer that comes in, you know, through that data decoding process, and we'll set load to complete. When we actually want to play the sound, we have to tell it where in the sound file we want to play, you know, so from this start time and for this long. So that will come out of the JSON. Like, you know, the sound manager will look in this JSON file and say, okay, if I want to play switch one, I need to start at second 0 0.45, and I'll have to play for 0 0.46 seconds. So, you know, it'll end up stopping at like 0 0.91 or something like that. Uh, so, uh, when we play this, you know, we're checking to make sure we have a context and that it's loaded. And then we're creating, you know, we're using our context to create a buffer source. And then, and you have to do this every time. Um, I'm not sure why, but anyway, you have to do this every time. Then you take your source and you set the buffer to, uh, you know, to the buffer that we created earlier. Um, where did we create that buffer? It was on the decode. Yeah. When the data was decoded, we set it to that buffer, the decoded data buffer. Then we connect it to, uh, to our de uh, destination. And then uh, we start the sound uh, and we start it at the start time and we have it play, you know, for this, uh, for the duration. Uh, if you want the sound to loop, um, and we have, I have in our uh, JSON file, you know, values for looping, even though in this uh, class we're not playing loop, we're not playing any music in a loop. But if you wanted like music in a loop, like background music or something like that, you would do source.loopstart uh, instead of source.start. So if you wanted to, you could check to see if this, this uh, particular sound is supposed to loop, and if so, you could actually have it playing uh, in a loop. So um, to organize our data that comes from the JSON here, we're going to create sound markers. And then inside our sound manager, we're going to um, we're going to use a dictionary of those sound markers in order to know where everything is that we want to play. So boom. So our sound marker is going to have a name. It's going to have a start time, a duration, a volume, if you want to adjust the volume on a specific sound, if it happens to be louder than you think everything else should be in that game, and it's going to, you know, whether or not you want to loop. And that follows along with what we have in our JSON file, start, duration, volume, loop. And uh, our constructor is just going to take all of those values and then set them, you know, in the sound marker. So this class is pretty simple. Uh, and it's going to be used by the sound manager to manage uh, where to know where all those sounds are. So now I just need to grab my sound manager class that we can walk through. We have I, I've got a couple console dot logs in here that I don't need. I was doing some. Uh, doing a little bit of debugging. I was having some problems loading my file, my JSON file. I needed to figure out what I was doing wrong. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm also not using this singleton. Uh, if you're not familiar with what a singleton is, I was going to, it's going to create a singleton. Um, and I didn't end up doing that. A singleton is basically a, um, what do you call it? Uh, a design pattern that basically I'm only going to have one sound manager. So a singleton means you're only going to allow one copy of that class to be created. And usually you have a static variable called singleton and you check to see if it's null when the, in the constructor. And if it is null, then you set it to this. And if it's not, then you want to delete this to get rid of it. But we don't, we don't, we're not using that singleton. So I'm just going to get rid of it for right now. Um, it's a pretty common design pattern. Uh, so in our sound manager, we're going to pass in the sound file name. Now this, this is not going to include, uh, dot, you know, dot MP3 or dot aug or whatever. It's going to be just the name without the extension. Uh, and then from there, we're going to grab, we're going to want to load our markers, adding the dot JSON extension because our, um, uh, our JSON file is going to have the same name. Uh, as our mp3 file or our aug file, except it's going to end in .json. So I believe for this I'm using something like Mahjong Audio 
uh, .mp3, Mahjong Audio .og, and Mahjong Audio .json. So it'll work as long as they're all named the same thing. Uh, this this method here just checks to see if uh, MP3 is enabled. And we do that by creating an audio element and then checking to see if that audio element can play MPEG. And, you know, if it can, then MP3 is enabled. Uh, so uh, that's how we, you know, that's how we're basically making sure that, uh, you know, MP3 is enabled. And if not, we'll load up the AUG file. So having a sound manager, we can do that check ahead of time. Uh, before we start loading anything up, uh, this is this is what we you know gets called when we play, like we did over here. So we're calling our sound manager dot play, and then we're passing in, you know, the names of these uh, these sounds that we have from our JSON file. You know, so what this is going to do uh, is it's going to look for the sound markers in our sound marker dictionary. Now we haven't actually loaded this up yet. Uh, we'll do that in a, in a second, but it's it's going to go look and see, okay, do we have a sound marker? And if we do, go to soundfile.play, play from the sound file from the marker start to the, you know, through the marker duration. Uh, so up here is where we have our dictionary for the sound markers. And basically this is taking, you know, the strings that are the names from our JSON file. So, you know, swish one, swish two, click, and it's loading up, you know, th loading up these this data into a uh, sound marker, and uh, putting it into the dictionary, you know, with that name as the ID. Um, so this is when you play a sound, you're just basically looking for that marker with the name that you're trying to play, and if it's there, you just play it, you know, using the start and end time, and you're going to play it from that that file. Uh, this is where we're loading up the markers, and this is just another XHR request. Uh, if you have done our Texture Atlas tutorial, we uh, went into some detail on this. Um, but basically, uh, you're loading up a JSON file here. So we're making an XML HTTP request. This on ready state change, this, this is going to get called whenever there's a state change in our uh, XML HTTP request. Um, the on error actually is a little bit misnamed uh, because you usually get several state changes that aren't errors. Um, so I, I basically all I'm doing here is I'm looking to see, okay, is the state change saying we're, we're done and the status is 200. So um, I should probably also check to see if the ready state, I should have, uh, this, this should be slightly different, but for right now it'll work fine. Um, you know, the on error is, is misnamed a little, but it, it'll it'll loop through this, or it'll it'll keep waiting until you get the proper state change, um, and then of course you know this like it might be a little confusing. This is not getting called in this uh, load markers. It's basically it's setting this code as what will get called, you know when uh, when the code has a state change. So none of this is happening in line. It goes from setting this state change code to uh, opening up your JSON file. So this is doing a get on that JSON file, uh, and it's getting it asynchronously, and then it's sending the request. Um, so on read is what gets called once the JSON is loaded, and this data is is just JSON data, and we're going to want to loop through all of the marker names in our markers. So if you go back to the JSON data this is markers and these are going to be all the marker names that are coming in um, and in those uh, we're going to want to basically take that data add a marker with a new uh, sound marker and all of this stuff is basic this add marker is adding the marker to the dictionary so uh, we're looping through that and we're adding all of our markers from our JSON file um, and then we're setting this to loaded, and then we're checking to th see if uh, if the MP3 is enabled. And if the MP3 is enabled, then we want to load our sound file with a .mp3 extension. If MP3 is not uh, is not available, like if it's uh, if it's not enabled, then we want to load an AUG file instead. So, um, 
All right, so this gets called when the sound file is loaded, and this is on error. We shouldn't have this fail to load because it's really not yet loaded. Um, uh, we should say have or something like have not loaded because, you know, there are going to be several state changes before this either errors out or loads. Uh, and here's our add marker. We also have a remove marker, which we're not really using. That just deletes from that marker dictionary. But our add marker just takes that marker dictionary, takes our sound marker name, and sets the sound marker equal to the sound marker. Yeah, basically sets our dictionary so that we can call this back with the marker name if we want to access you know, that, that marker using the marker name that we had given it in the JSON file. Uh, so the only other thing I think we need to do is create our sound manager. So uh, we're, this is where we're defining what the sound underscore manager that we're using here is. And then on the window load, we are, um, we're creating the new sound manager. And then once, uh, once we've done all this, once we, you know, kick this off, the constructor kicks off, you know, it's going to take this Mahjong audio, it's going to look for the JSON file, it's going to load the JSON file, it's going to create the markers, then it's going to load uh, either an AUG or an MP3 file with all that sound in it for us to play. So that is about it. I'm thinking this should run now. All right. Yeah. All right. So that's our uh, that's our little app there. I mean, basically, that just demonstrates what it takes to play sounds. If you want to like load up multiple sounds, uh, if you just have one sound to play, you could just use. I, I think it's an audio tag. I'd have to look it up. I always do it this way because, uh, well, first of all, I always have multiple sounds. Uh, but second of all, you know, if you have multiple sound load, you, you do this for the same reason that you use a, um, a texture atlas. Uh, you want to have one download. You don't want it to, um, you don't want to be downloading, you know, with a whole bunch of connections, multiple files. Uh, so this, uh, this is kind of the way to do it. Um, I don't know that I got everything in this completely perfect. I think kind of, I Frankenstein this together from a couple projects I had, and there are a few things I'm currently not using. But, you know, you could you could tweak this uh, to get it to where you need it to be um, and add it to a game where you're using the canvas or even a game that, where you're using the DOM, wh whatever. Uh, as long if you need sound in your game, this is what you do. And, um, you know, uh, so anyway, uh, I'm going to have the code up on TypescriptGames.com. And uh, if you like the tutorial, please subscribe to my channel. So hopefully everything went well and uh, see you next time.